Hi everyone, it's Liam here from Rating the Races. So uh, we're going to go through the Newbury card again tomorrow. Um, there are there is races at uh, Newcastle, but I've just got a feeling it's going to be abandoned, isn't it? Um, if I hear that it's going to be on, then I might have a look at that. But let's go through the Newbury card instead um, and highlight those that I think will go really close tomorrow. Starting off with the second race, I'm not interested in the first race. Um, let me just check what was that first race. It is a Mayor's Novice listed hurdle. Yeah, it didn't interest me. The second race does interest me, and there's a horse here that I think um, could be quite nicely handicapped. Um, well, he's definitely nicely handicapped, um, and I think this might have been the, the plan for a little while. And that horse is Java Point. Now, Java Point ran in this race last year. Um, he finished third, off a mark of 133, beaten by Zanza and Demachine. Now, obviously, Zanza... Um, if you remember back last year, was incredibly well handicapped. Um, he won that race. He then actually went on to win a grade two and ended up going to Newbury a few runs later. Uh, rated 158? Rated 158. 24 pounds higher than when winning at Newbury. The runner-up, Demachine, um, didn't go and win again, but he's obviously a really highly rated horse. He he finished fifth in a um, Skybet handicap chase afterwards and seventh in the Topham. You know, he's a, a very smart horse, um, was probably dropping down in class, had come into the race off the back of a win at Utoxita. All good form. Java Point finished third, ran a good race um, off a mark of 133. He can re run here. Off a mark of 128. So five pounds lower. And he hasn't run for 197 days. And I just feel that this could have been. Well we go back for that race. We bumped into two very smart horses. Um, and yeah I quite like him. I think he's got to go very very close. In that first race at Newbury. Captain Noor is the one that I'm kind of. I'll be disappointed and frustrated. If he wins. He's run everywhere so far this season already. He's had four runs. Dropped to a mark of 128 down to a mark of 123, did run in this race last year, uh, finished fifth off a mark of 130, Ellis was take, taking seven off, so uh, effectively 123, he's running off 123 again, can he reverse the form on Java Point? I hope not, and Java Point, I think, um, with the exception of... <coughs> With the exception of his last race, uh, I thought I'd actually run quite well last season. So he's the one I like for the first race at Newbury, or the first race I'm interested in, which is the second race. And you can currently get 9-1 to one about him. Um, so he is my selection in the second race. Moving on to the 140. Um, I skipped the uh, maiden... No, it's not. It's the novice hurdle I skip. Move on to the next handicap. And yeah, I think this horse has to be backed. It's jet-powered. Um, is getting shorter, 7-2, to two, but could be, you know, could still be anything. Um, after winning at Newbury, the race just won by Jericho de Repinay, won by John Bon, won by My Drogo, won by Bouvou Dea. Um, they then went to um, Newbury and got beat, and got beat comfortably. But there was some decent horses in the race, to be fair. Jupiter de Gite, um he did all right afterwards. He didn't go and win, but he didn't run terribly um, in a handicap when finish in a novice hurdle. Sorry, finishing third to Iberico Lord, who's obviously won a great wood. The third horse, Inniston, finished second in an Imperial Cup. No, he didn't. He finished second in the Grade Three uh, Premier Handicap at Sandown. Good, decent form. Um, but yeah, Jet Powered was clearly disappointing that day. You would imagine they thought that Jet Powered, having run in this maiden hurdle um, at Newbury, was going to be their supreme novice horse. And the fact that he's running here off a mark of 131 in a handicap, he could be he could be anything. He could still be ridiculously well handicapped. Um, and he is the one that I'm going to go for here because I think whilst I don't like that that maiden race um, that Jericho de Repinay's just won for the supreme novice, they still do do pretty good. As, you know, Bouvou Dare finished third in that, won a champion hurdle. My Drogo is a grade one winner. Um, John Bon is a multiple grade one winner. Jet Power probably isn't going to be a grade one winner, but I bet he's going to win some races, and hopefully tomorrow is one of those. We move on to the 2.15, um, and the horse I like here is our top-rated horse, uh, Brentford Hope. Now, 
Under control was very good last season, uh, winning four out of five, only being beaten in the Mayor's Novice Hurdle at um, Cheltenham. Was winning handicaps and is only a four-year-old. I think Brentford Hope has now improved. You can see that his R figure didn't particularly go up and down, apart from last time when he won at Newbury. That was a very, very good performance, a 152.8. That's right up there being you know, good enough to go into bigger and better things. And only rated 133. I think that's very lenient for Brentford Hope still. Um, yeah, I think... Uh, I, I think he has demonstrated by winning that that he's way ahead of his mark um, when he won at um, Newbury. He won it so easily. But the fact that he's... Still got a 152.8, and we take into account the massive rise in the handicap. I think that shows that we still think that he's well ahead of his mark. Um, the danger for me is probably not under control. It's bad, who could still be anything. Now, obviously, he was really well supported for the um, juvenile hurdle, the Boodles, at the Cheltenham Festival, went off 5-1 to one and ran disappointingly. But you can see his performances have been getting better, and he is nearly there. I just want to check the prices on that. Bad's 10s. Do you know what? I'm going to cover them both. Because Bad could be very well handicapped off 120. I'm actually going to cover them both. Um, bad at 10s and Brentford Hope at 11 to 4. He's the one I'm worried about. That If there's more improvement, a bit more to come for more experience, and he runs a 155 next time, I could certainly see that from Bad. So I'm going to cover them both. Um on the prices that they currently are. I think they're, you know, that's a nice price about bad. Moving on to the 250, the Hennessy. We're going to call it the Hennessy because that's what it is. Um, and my two in this race, so I'm going to have two in this race as well. And they are going to be Mombeg Genius and Kitty's Light. Now, Mombeg Genius finished third in the Ultima last year. Uh, that form has obviously worked out incredibly well. Correct Rambler won it fast or slow was second. Uh, dual grade one winner in second. And Correct Rambler won the Grand National. You know, looks really, really strong form. He came into it as a novice. He went off the 6-1 to one joint favourite. Um, the only, the you know, the only concern is that he pulled up at Ascot. But he went off 11-2 to two at Ascot in a race that is nowhere near the quality that he's running against here. And if this was... If that was his true running and they was expecting him to run to his best, he would have gone off five to two favourite for that race at Ascot. He didn't. He went off five to one. He went off 11 to two, sorry, suggesting that they knew he wasn't going to run his race. Um, and they knew that he, he, there was plenty of work left in him. You know, they were probably disappointed that he blundered at the 16th and they pulled him up shortly afterwards. Um, I think they would have preferred to have got home. But he's gone round for most of the way and that should... That should, in my opinion, put him spot on for this. The horse who I have to back just in case is Kitty's Light. I think this will be too short, three mile two. But if they go really hard from the front, he is the one that will be finishing best of all. I could see him getting way outpaced running on for fifth or sixth. And that will be fine with the Grand National in mind. That's where I think um, he will have his best chance is the Grand National. However, if he turns up and he's running close to you know he if he's jumping the second last in fifth i think he would win it um so yeah i've got to do kitty's light as well they're, they're big enough prices to do them both 15 to 2 about monbeg genius and kitty's light is available at 20s so they are my two for the um hennessy and the final one in the 325 uh, i did mention this in yesterday's video the form has obviously been incredibly well franked already uh, it's master chewy in that last at 13 to 8 um, got beat by um, DeGello last time. That's obviously looking quite good form now. DeGello come out and won nicely despite making a mistake. And he had previously beaten um, General Officer Martator and Pembroke quite comfortably. So yeah, Master Chewy I think is still nicely handicapped off 1-3-7. Um, and we'll take all of the beating here going from the front. Um, or, or right behind the leaders he might get a nice run through from Bollinger and Krug. Um, but yeah, he is the, the one to beat in this race at 13 to 8. So there are my selections. Let's just quickly go back through them. Java point at nines. Uh, I think this is the plan. He finished third off a £5 high mark last year. 
Jet Powered at 7 to 2. They won on a race that they normally run their graded horses in. Um, disappointed on his second start, so I think they put him away with handicaps in mind this season. Brentford Hope at 11 to 4. I think that's a really strong form at last one. And bad, if there's any more to come, bad will show it tomorrow. Mombeg Genius and Kitty's Light in the Hennessy. Mombeg Genius is third in the old team and was obviously red hot form. And Kitty's Light, if they go fast enough and he's running on strongly, um, he will be the one finishing best. It's whether he's close enough. And Master Chewy in the last, his form has obviously been really well franked recently uh, with Gigello winning. And I think he takes all of the beating here at in the last. <laughs> 